Hi there, let's take a look at new features in AnyType Desktop version 0.40 update. Just a quick note that I'm going to make separate videos for the AnyType multiplayer and AnyType membership plans because there's a lot of detail that goes into both of those. So I'm just gonna do a quick overview. And if you're like me, I usually think of video games when I hear multiplayer, but this is actually the team collaboration feature. So right now you can actually have more than one person in an any type digital workspace. Now, since this is the first release, it's limited to just being able to edit documents together. There's currently not comments available. However, you can see a revision history to see who the last person that edited a document is. Now, the number of editors and viewers in your space will depend on a membership plan, which we'll take a look at now. So there are three membership plans available, and in order to use multiplayer as of version 40, you do need to be connected online to the AnyType network with at least the Explorer plan, which is still free, um, but you do have to sign up for that. Then the builder plan right now is 99 US dollars for a one year subscription. And then the co-creator plan is the highest level plan starting at 299 US dollars for a three year subscription. And at the time of this recording, there are some limited promo code discounts available. I'll leave the link below in the video description. Uh, the best one I think right now is the two for one. It's 99 US dollars for a two year subscription. So now I'm going to transition into some of the more quality of life updates, custom storage space. To access this feature, you do need to log out. When you get to the log out option under your profile settings, it will remind you to save your key, which it was previously called recovery phrase. And this is so important because there's not a password reset at all. If you lose the key, you pretty much lose access to your entire AnyType vault. On the login page, you'll go up to the top right corner and there's a gear icon. And once you click on that, it will give you some options for connecting to the different networks as well as changing the custom storage location. All right, the next update deals with the preferences options in the profile menu. So if you go to either your gear icon in the toolbar down here, or you go up to the text menu in your of your app, you can find it under vault. Um, you'll notice that they change the name of certain things. So previously I referred to this as your account settings. So now it's either your vault or profile settings. Here in this menu, you have some options for how to open the quick capture menu. And that is down here on your toolbar. Previously, when you press this plus icon, it would just open whatever you set as your default object. Usually it starts off as a note, but you can also have this quick capture menu, which will show you a uh, selection of different objects in your any type. Um, so now instead of right clicking, you can now just change it to either click on the plus icon or hover when you're on the plus icon. Um, this also allows you to open your objects in full screen. I know a lot of people did not like the pop-up window or modal view. So this one allows you to just open everything uh, in full screen. The next update is graph is now an option in the layout view for sets and collections. So previously you just had the options for like grid, gallery, um, Kanban view, list, and now graph is also here. But I'll be honest, I'm not sure that I like this one mainly because it doesn't show you the connections. So if you go to the global graph view, like of your entire any type space, um, it'll show you collections and that way you can see that all of these are connected to each other in this one collection. However, when you look at it in this um, graph view, when you're already in a set or collection, it just shows all of them kind of floating around, not having that main connection point. Uh, so yeah, I haven't figured out how I will be using this yet, but definitely let me know in the comments if you're really excited about this view.
Next update is files and media relation formats added to set filter menu. This is referring to something that you are uploading into any type. So it could be a PDF or it could be like a JPEG image or a MP4 video file. Um, you can now filter it in the options here because previously it didn't have attachments as an option and now it does. Uh, there were some design improvements in widgets and to be honest I have a hard time finding the differences in the border radius on the widgets so I don't have a screenshot of that um, and then I also don't have access to show you a Windows version. I'm actually recording on a Mac um, but they did change the naming conventions of system menu was renamed to menu bar and menu bar was renamed to system tray for Windows and Linux versions. Okay, and then this one is actually a really great update that I've been waiting for is to reuse uploaded images as icons. Previously, you could only reuse images in the gallery for covers, but now if you upload uh, an image to use as an icon, uh, you can see it in the gallery and you can reuse it when you make other objects. And then there was a lot of small tech and bug fixes, which you can also read. I'll link to the full update notes uh, where those are listed out.